Right, so welcome along to another episode of the iPhotography Podcast. You've got Stephen and you've also got Rebecca. Hi, everyone. So thank you very much for joining us. If it's your first time and if you're coming back and, and listening to another episode again, thank you so much. Um, it's lovely to kind of have new followers, new subscribers. So whether you're listening to this as a podcast um, or even watching it on YouTube as well, um, I greatly appreciate it. Um, today, what are we talking about? So my notes say we're talking about finding inspiration and motivation as a photographer. Is it important to be motivated and inspired all the time or just as and when you need? Um, I mean, I don't think you need it all the time. Um, some things just kind of hit you in the face and just say, photograph me. Yeah. Um, so which you don't need the inspiration as much. But um, yeah, I think it's good to have highs and lows of it, I think. I think sometimes by not having the motivation or not having the inspiration, forces you to to go out and find it um which is always a good thing yeah i, I think you're, you're right and it's i think it's sometimes hard to self-motivate if you've had kind of periods of you know bad time throughout your life or or just just the whole you know outdoor world whether the weather's bad or whatever as well that kind of just holds you back because i know it's it's one of the hardest hurdles to get over in photography um is to actually kind of battle against motivation or lack of inspiration because you can you can sit and read a book and learn about exposure triangles shutter speed whatever it is but you with your own kind of self-doubt and, and lack of confidence or whatever it may be i think those are like the harder things to actually kind of master in photography you know you can read a book to solve other issues but sometimes more internal issues um are, are kind of harder to get so hopefully you know we're going to go through uh, a couple of kind of questions that we've written for ourselves um and try and get to the kind of the root cause of maybe what causes it but then also um how to solve it and maybe how we've solved it because have you ever had kind of lulls of enthusiasm or motivation or however you want to frame it kind of during your photography career Rebecca oh yeah you know I get them all the time especially when things go wrong and you know what I'm the most unluckiest person you'll ever meet so I've been to photo shoots before dragged kit up flights and flights of stairs got there and the ball's blown and I've had to go back to the car you know it's it's just been Sometimes it's one of those days where everything goes wrong. I've turned up at shoots before and completely forgotten memory cards and I've had to run to the nearest shop to go and buy one. You know, you'd, you wouldn't believe some of the dramas I have. And that puts me off because I think, oh, what's the point? Because everything's going to go wrong. It's me. It always goes wrong. But I think if things never go wrong, you'll never learn as well. So now I always pack double memory cards. And I always bring the bulbs with me. <laughs> so, you know, you, you try and avoid these kind of problems, I guess, after a while. Yeah, I always find that I enjoy the irony that memory cards have that word memory because of the one thing that so many <laughs> people forget. And yeah, I think I think if you end up spending kind of lots of money on memory cards, that's sometimes a good reminder because you just don't want to forget things that you've spent a lot of money on and you're always like uh -huh. conscious to make use of them. Um, but not that I always endorse that you have to spend a lot of money on memory cards. I think it's just a, a way of trying to kind of keep it in the back of your mind. But um, but yeah, you, I right. stash them in so many places now, you know, you would not believe where I keep my memory cards just so that some one of them is going to make it to the shoot. <laughs> I, I literally think i mean i know obviously like there's the way of putting it in the camera um but you know i mean, we always tend to say you know take them out afterwards because you never know you it's like yeah. you know, having a battery in something for a long period of time take your battery out um it, it just kind of stops any kind of decaying or, or any kind of calcification on all the electronics but um there's, there's got to be some way whether it's just like a little tag you know like that goes on a, a wrist strap or something like that that keeps the memory card on there so it's not actually in the slot but it's still attached to the camera there's got to be some mm. sort of invention someone comes out with maybe we could we can kind of copyright and patent the idea and do that do you know my trick is just to stick a person out on the front door uh, it's idea. usually it's usually I've taken the memory card out and I've uploaded them on my computer and I get to the shoot and I think I can see the memory card on my desk next to the computer. Um, so yeah, I, that's why I, I tend to hide them. I usually have one hidden in the car just in case. I, think uh, I always have one in my purse. Oh, that's good. That's a good Just idea. things that you, you have on you anyway. Um, I mean, if you've yeah. got a phone case, you could put it through the back of your phone in there. 
See, um, think... just because I always forget. They should have some sort of, you know, like in the recess between like your little LCD screen and, you know, where it flips out. In that recess there, there should be like a little, little kind of place to be able to just put a spare card. A note. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> just, or just remind yourself in it as well, because yeah. I'm surprised they've not built in like a laptop or something, you know, a bigger memory within the ca- in the actual camera itself. So, I mean, sometimes yeah. you can take one or two shots um, and it just flashes up to remind you to say no card and camera. But why haven't they not basically got like a hard drive? You know, it doesn't have to be physically big. And I appreciate it probably would add a little bit size and weight to the camera itself really. But even if it's just, you know, a small one. Um, you can do it in a phone, can't you? So, exactly. and a phone smaller than a camera. Yeah, and that's it. I mean, I know the quality of shots will be, you know, not as not as good necessarily, but whether it's just some sort of fail safe. But um, but I think anyway, we're going off tangent. Yeah, I think we've, <laughs> we're inventing <laughs> stuff now. Exactly. <laughs> what were we talking about? Motivation. Um. But yeah. Yeah. So, so where where do you look for inspiration, then, Stephen? Where do I go? There's a number of different ways I do it. I think it's. It's, for me, it's mood related as to whether I can be bothered to sit down, and maybe like read a book. You know, it is because, yeah, everyone, you know, motivation, I suppose, is, is guided by emotions. But um, I use online a lot, like loads of people. It's just the easiest access whilst it's on your phone. Um, every now and again, I've got like Pinterest boards that I add images to. Um, I probably are slightly more motivated when I've got like a project coming up. But that's not always the case mm-hmm. for everybody because we know we may be at a point that we're just not bothered to pick the camera up to begin with. But um, movies uh, may sound really odd, but I, I love watching films. So I find sometimes uh, certain films, just the cinematography in it, the colours, uh, the some of the shots within them as well. There's there's kind of quite a few that I, I find quite good motivational tools, even if it's not that particular kind of image or scene I'm trying to recreate or, or feeling, it just gives me enough of an urge to go, yeah, I want to do something. I want to pick up the camera and, and photograph something. And it goes off on a tangent somewhere else, but at least it <laughs> gets you up and it gets me doing something. But yeah, I well, it's like I'll flip the question back the other way. Where, you know, where do you go? Do you have anything? I, I love I love books and stuff, you know. Um, I think because I do a lot of technical um side of eye photography and you know to do the websites and things and I spend a lot of time looking at a screen so I like that factor of coming away from the screen and looking at a physical kind of book um so some of my favorite my my go-to favorite book is um called Art Photography Now by Susan Bright and it's just kind of three or four photographs from each artist um broken down into um sort of themes and usually just having a little flick through there there's a few bookmarks in, in my copy as well you know so I know the the kind of particular artists that I like and I'll go to and um, and sometimes it's good just to start again just go back to your inspiration have a little think and start again yeah um but as well you know to discover new stuff I mean I think I've spoken before in a podcast about uh, going to exhibitions and especially um after the kind of year or so we've had a lot of them post their artists online so you can actually browse the artist catalogs online, um, which if you just totally don't know where to start, that's a really good way to do it because you can see 100% of variety, um, which is really great. So if you haven't listened to the last podcast, one I mentioned was Paris Photo, um, and they have all their exhibitors online. And it's a good, good range of people um, to get some inspiration from there. That's that's awesome. Yeah, you, you're totally right. I think, yeah, we have chatted about it previously um because the one thing it just reminded me of and again it's it may sound like it's going off and not on a on a, on a non-photography tangent but um i think again because of that as you say like how 2020 went etc a loads of places have to adapt i saw museums doing like 360 virtual tours uh, and i imagine of those like pre-recorded you can go back to them in the future and basically people were able to navigate themselves through say like the national portrait gallery or one of the Tate galleries and you could actually kind of go and have a look at the picture and it gives you a description of the artwork etc so you don't have to be there um but it, it puts you in that 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 realm um, that environment really which i think is kind of still kind of quite inspirational and maybe it's just a different way of looking at it as opposed to actually going there you know if you, if you can't physically get there if it's overseas as you say it's the, the world of online is, is fantastic, but 
Um, I'll agree. I mean, I am not a big reader myself. You know that I'm not, I have not necessarily got the patience to sit down and, and read. I'm <laughs> trying my best. I got loads of books for my birthday recently. Um, and I am kind of trying to force myself in, in a nice way through it. Um, but one book that I picked up, I got it at a, like a secondhand store. Um, it's called Century. Um, so I think it's by uh, Bruce Bernard or Bernard. Uh, and it literally is just a giant photo book and it weighs an absolute ton, I swear. I don't know how many pages there are, but there must be like five, 600. And it's literally images, kind of seminal images through the 20th century. So going from like 1900 through to 2000. So there's hundreds of images in there and there's a little description about them. And I, and I, I just flick through and I, I have a look at the images that kind of were taken around when I was born and things that had happened, you know, prior to that. So I get a kind of better understanding of, you know, how the world was shaped and such. But it's just also how these photographers would put themselves in these positions to capture those shots that I find are kind of quite, quite motivating and quite an, an inspiring thing. So, yeah, as much as I'm not one for like reading literature, like classical literature as such, but you know, photo art books or coffee table art books, whatever you want to call them. Um, I find it quite useful. And yeah, you, you don't have to spend a they lot are. of money on them. You can find them in like charity stores, can't you? Yeah. Or I mean, some places, especially, you know, bigger exhibitions will give you a copy for free. Um, and it's always worth keeping hold of things like that because you never know when something might be relevant. But I mean, one thing I find quite difficult, especially looking um, as not not to call you old, but you know, as far back as, as when you were born. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you didn't use the year. <laughs> um, you know, how, how do you then translate that inspiration into motivation to take something in the modern day? How do you kind of convert that? Well, that yeah, I think that's a very, very good point, you know, because it's it's all well and good talking about the motivation and, and how to find it and, and inspiration and such, but how does that then transform into a photograph? But I mean, I, I have done it in the past previously. I mean, I've talked about movies um, that I've I've literally been kind of so caught by, you know, a scene or a character or whatever. And then I've literally gone out to find, you know, because uh, I do a lot of portrait photography, as you know. So I've gone out to kind of find a model who kind of somewhat maybe fits the style of the brief of the, the kind of the actress or the character that I want to represent. And then literally try to dress them similar as well and then put them in a similar frame. So I do kind of try that element of recreation. Um, and sometimes it doesn't work, but it's just the process at least. Because again, we're not talking about taking the best image. It's just getting your backside out there and, and kind of yeah. the camera and doing something really. And then if you're more positive, if you're more looking for inspiration, if you're trying to motivate yourself, I find that it comes, you know, it comes easier really as well. You kind of make your own look in that sense. So, I mean, it could just be something as simple as like, I've sound, we've used um, editing apps on the phone before. And again, some of them are great. Some of them are absolutely crap. Um, but just going around taking pictures of like household, like household items, using some of these apps and trying some different filters. Again, you know, the answers may not work out, but it's got you up and taking those pictures really. So uh, yeah, I, I use a lot online, see what other people are doing, find things that are kind of quite unusual, maybe that are really odd and quirky. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, I, I've certainly done some based upon movies in the past and characters I, I've done. I mean, have you ever kind of had like a process of where you've read something or watched something and then tried to like recreate it or use the inspiration from it? I mean, not to the T. Um, I tend to take elements from different people. Um, so, for example, one of my favourite artists that we've written about before is um, Tom Hunter. And I really like his kind of iconic image of uh, Ophelia, which is, I mean, if anyone doesn't know him, he's based in Hackney and he does a lot of the homeless people of Hackney, as he was fond of himself. And he was really into the drug scene kind of back in the day. And... Ophelia is an, a lady lying in the, um, so his is a recreation of the painting of Ophelia, it's a lady lying in the water, but she's kind of, you know, not in a good state almost. And, you know, I liked that idea. Um, and then I translated it into my own version, which I think I've shared in the plus group before uh, of my friend in the bath, you know, that kind of milk sheep kind of idea. So I, I like taking elements and aspects of different photographers and almost combining them in a way. And then that then becomes more of your style. Yeah, I, I remember that. It's, it is kind of quite a, 
quite a dark image. It may seem kind of quite bleak, yeah. like a top of, but but that's the style. Like, I was thinking of saying this to somebody the other day that photography doesn't need to be pretty. Um, it just no, needs to be no. honest, really. And um, I think we wrote a blog about that because it was part of an idea about how to what we say hack a photographer's style, but it's effectively deconstructing an image to say this is what they've done here, this is what they've done there. And you, like you said, you take those elements. You're not trying to recreate yeah. the whole image exactly. But you're taking the style to to kind of again just give you something something to do, um, but but yeah I think that's that's really nice because I really like those um, those bath shots. Um, we'll try and <laughs> I just think actually on the the video version of this podcast as well. If you send me the shots, we'll uh, we'll put yeah, yeah. So I can drop them in. That would be absolutely awesome. But I mean, once once you've got to the point of kind of motivating yourself, where you found a source of inspiration, you know, is it is it. Do you think it is tricky to kind of keep going or what do you do to keep going to make sure you don't hit that kind of lull again? Yeah, I mean, it can be, especially if you've had one attempt that's really successful. And, you know, I'm, I'm always keen on, you know, try something similar, but elevate it and, and keep elevating it each time. And if you sometimes one works really well, and then when you try and go back to it or you try and adjust it, it doesn't work. And it's easy to, to get kind of back to square one from that. Um, but yeah, definitely keep the important thing is share your work because the more you share it, the more people will bug you to do more. <laughs> <laughs> Which is always handy when you've got someone tap on your shoulder saying, Can you do another one? Um, but yeah, definitely keep keep up the inspiration, make that a routine, make that part of your kind of daily life, you know. Um, and it doesn't have to be every day, but try to, you know, maybe once a month visit a gallery that you like or you know, all these little things that you're doing to find inspiration in the first place, make that part of a bigger routine that you do regularly. Yeah. I, um, I, I like yeah. what you're saying about a habit. Because it, it, I think we, we spoke about this a while ago. I think it was yourself. Yeah, yourself. we did towards the beginning, I think, of our yeah. podcast series. That's, so have a scroll back through any of the podcast episodes. And I think when we talked about making photography a habit, because um, I, I think I remember saying it, it takes something like 30 or 60 days of repetitiveness yeah, it does, to... Yeah build it into your kind of daily routine or your weekly routine but it really helps um because then you're kind of always thinking about you know artistic things and i think like we said the more you're looking for these opportunities they will just you know appear they'll inspire as opposed to just kind yeah. of sitting on your backside and watching the telly and hoping <laughs> something comes up you know if, you, if you're not in that frame of mind then you, you can't kind of blame the rest of the world for them taking better photographs than you or them just taking photographs when you're not because i i see that as a like a bit of a of a cop out sometimes people say oh you know oh they take better pictures than me it's like, oh i can't think like that and such but I think I, I think it's it's a state of mind that you get yourself in, isn't it? It's not like um, you know the world chooses that person to be creative and not that person. I think there's yeah. an opportunity, isn't there? You know, to, to... I think everyone can be creative in their own way. Yeah. It's just finding that little area that suits them, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I, you, you're right. You know, there's it, you can't just what am I saying I suppose you can't just kind of sit back and expect it to come to you really but yeah. you understand your equipment you know if you if you're not worried about kind of oh how to use my camera and how to do the settings you can just concentrate on kind of capturing things that are in front of you instinctively as well and it's just letting your your mind look for those opportunities by as you say reading or watching a movie uh you know going you know, just going on a walk going to an exhibition you're having a browse yeah. online really as well you don't have to kind of pressure yourself to do loads of different things but just doing something makes a big difference really but um going yeah, for a walk is actually a really good idea because the more i always find that my best inspiration comes when i'm in the bath you know when you can just switch off from everything but finding a way to go out quietly on your own with no music no you know and and just oh, oh music is actually but um and just think you know open, let your mind kind of do its own thing and and you end up with something yeah eventually well, <laughs> or you get lost well, that's, yeah, God, if, if you do all that kind of looking for inspiration and trying to motivate yourself and nothing happens then then well maybe yeah it's just not worth it Some, something's just not <laughs> clicking in the universe but but it'd be interesting to know kind of you know if you're listening to this 
you know, how your motivation has been, you know, over the past six, 12 months and, you know, have you managed to adapt your photography to, to kind of the world, you know, have you kind of managed to kind of keep going and where do you go to find inspiration as well? Cause it, it's really, really nice to be able to share these uh, kind of little nuggets of information because there may be websites or, or books or photographers that we're just not aware of um, that are worth checking out, aren't there? Yeah, definitely. And, and I'm always keen to know more, um, especially I think with photography, it, it gets a bit stuck sometimes and sometimes it just needs a bit more sharing and, and uh, communication about what, what's new and what's out there and what's available. That's indeed. And I think iPhotography has got lots of resources for that. If we give the opportunity to plug ourselves, <laughs> so you can always <laughs> check us out. Kind of obviously we've got loads of podcasts previously recorded and there'll be more to come. Um, so if you do want a little bit more inspiration and a few ideas, then check out other episodes. That would be absolutely amazing. And give us a, a follow or subscribe from wherever you're seeing us and all listening to us. Um, but you can always find us again on the standard social media. So the Facebooks, Instagram, YouTubes, etc. Just look for iPhotography on there but if you want to take it further and actually start to kind of build those skills a little bit more if you head over to our dedicated link which is learn.iphotography.com forward slash podcast uh, we've got a range of offers on there for some of our different photography courses which are 24 7 lifetime access so it's a case that once you join the course you've got it there forever you don't get kicked off you get access to our wonderful gallery where you will see Rebecca and myself and tutors um, Emily, uh, Nick and Rachel trying to remember everybody else that we've got with us. Um, and we can kind of help out. We can kind of give you a little bit of tips and guidance. We've also got a fantastic membership service on top of that, um, which can give you kind of extra feedback and extra help um, when we do loads of live videos, critiques, webinars, Q and A's, tons of things like that. So check out Plus if you want to know a little bit more. Um, but thank you, Rebecca. It's been good fun. Yeah, thank you for having me. Are, are you quite motivated and inspired to go out with your camera now? <laughs> I do. I feel very motivated. Can take the dogs out and take my uh, camera out as well. That's it. You've always got to have a camera with you, even if it's your phone, you know, wherever it is, then just make sure you've got something with you. You never know what's going to happen. Um, but thank you very much for listening. It's been absolutely wonderful. Catch us on a future episode. So for myself and Rebecca, in the meantime, bye-bye for now. See you later.